When you first log into the Tatabase Builder, you'll be prompted to create your first app. There's three different options on screen that you can choose from, such as starting with a template, the quick start wizard, or starting from scratch. Starting with a template is quick and convenient as it provides you with a fully built and functioning application that you can then customize to your needs by personalizing the data and the web pages that are used to actually display and manage the data inside your application. The quick start wizard is a more granular approach where you could still build a template application, but you're selecting what building blocks you want to be a part of that templated application, and they're all categorized by industry and feature type. Alternatively, you can just build your app from scratch, which allows you to manually build your data structure, import your existing spreadsheets, and create pages and layouts exactly the way you envision them. For this video, we're going to be exploring building an app from scratch. Once inside the builder, you'll see several tabs on the left-hand side of the page. Let's explore each tab to understand what it does and what its purpose is. We'll start with the data builder tab. Since database applications are all about the data that's actually stored inside of them, we recommend starting here, where you'll build and define the data structure for your application itself. Inside the data builder, we have tables or data tables, which is the core of your data in your application. Since so many of you are already familiar with spreadsheets, we'll use that as our analogy to help understand what data tables actually are. Generally, when you're organizing your data in Excel or Google Sheets, you'd create a new sheet for each type of data that you actually want to store uh, information for. For example, you might have separate sheets for customers, orders, and jobs. In Tatabase, you would do the same thing with data tables. We'd create a data table for each one of those objects, customers, orders, and jobs, and we'd name them accordingly. In spreadsheets, you'd add a new column for each type of data like customer name, email, and phone number. When creating data tables, those columns would be represented as fields, where we need to define the type of field that you plan on using based on the type of data that you plan on storing. You can simply add new fields to a data table by selecting any of the fields and field types displayed at the menu at the top of the data builder. Moving over to the records tab, you can see how this data table is going to start to take shape, represented by the rows or records and the columns or fields. Adding a new record here in the screen is just like populating a row in a spreadsheet. Now, before we move on, we'll quickly just add any other types of data tables in their appropriate fields so that we have them inside of the data builder. You can see we now have a jobs table as well as a job notes table. For our use case, we want to keep a log of notes for each job. That leads us into an important part of what makes Tatabase so powerful and functional, and that is the use of connection fields. Unlike spreadsheets where you can't really connect individual sheets with each other, database-powered applications have the ability to create relationships between the different data tables that you are creating. Creating these kinds of relationships inside of Tatabase allows us to associate a job note record to a job record. And you can think about this in other ways, such as contacts belonging to companies, tasks belonging to projects, children belonging to parents. So we'll create a connection field inside of our job notes table that will allow us to connect each note to a particular job. After doing so, we've now kind of finished with our basic data structure. And the next step would be to build the application that can actually utilize this data structure. But before we move on, let's just quickly cover some of the other options that are available to you inside of the data builder. Now, just to recap, the fields tab is where you are adding and customizing the fields that make up a data table, while the records tab allows you to view, add, and edit the actual data as records that belong to the data table. The settings tab has some advanced and default settings that could be unique to each data table, where the rules tab allows you to define pre-configured automations that run every single time a record is created or edited or both. For example, if you wanted to set the job status to open every single time a record is created, you can do that here inside of table rules. The next step is going to actually be to build out the web pages that you and your users are going to utilize to create, read, update, and delete all of the actual data that lives inside of your data builder. 
But just as the data builder has a defined structure on how our tables are organized and relationships are built, the page builder is a similar thing and we need to define a structure in which our pages will take shape. In Tatabase, we do that using page layouts and pages themselves and the components that live inside the pages. You can think of page layouts as templates that contain multiple pages within. For example, if you want the same menu component on top of every single page, you'd put a menu component inside the layout and it would appear on every page contained within. Pages are the actual canvas where you're placing components to view and modify your data. We do that using the components that are available inside of the page builder. They are primarily used to interact with the data stored in your data builder. For example, a form component enables you to add or edit records from a specific data table, whereas a table component allows you to view those records. Each of the components that are available serve different functions and are highly customizable, so I recommend you play around and check out all of the extensive options that we have. Let's create a new page now so that we can start to visualize what our application is going to look like. When configuring this new page, we'll give it a title. We can choose the layout in which this page is going to live, and we can choose whether or not we want to add this page as a menu link to an existing menu component inside of a page layout. Next, you'll choose the first component that you can add to a page. In this case, we'll choose a table, and then we'll select the data table that contains the records that we wish to display. Our last configuration will be to, to decide if we want to include a form to add new records into the table and whether or not we want to include a link or a button to view more details about one specific record from this table. We'll cover these two items separately, so I'm going to leave these disabled for now. You can see our page has now been created and we now have a component that lives inside of the page. The basic page structure is defined as follows. We have rows, which are outlined in green. We have columns that are outlined in orange, and we have components which are outlined in blue. The way rows and columns are structured is using a grid system. From a bird's eye view, it works as follows. Each page can have an unlimited number of rows, and each row can be divided into any combination of columns equaling 12 or less. For example, if you wanted to divide your page in half and have one component on the left and have another component on the right, we would have to split the row into two different columns where each column is a size six. If you wanted to divide the page into three equal columns, you'd add three columns of size four. For this page, we're going to split this row in half and we're going to have two side by side columns. On the right hand side, we're going to have our table component to display our job records. And on the left hand side, we're going to have a form component that allows us to add new records into that data table. If you prefer to add records in line through the use of an add new record pop-up, we can revisit that option that was displayed to us when we were first creating our page. By clicking on the table component and entering the component configuration window, we can navigate to the options tab and enable the add new record pop-up. This is going to create a form that's attached directly to the table component and display that form as a pop-up modal when clicking a button that says add new record. Now that we have our two components set up on the page to add records to a data table and to view records from a data table, we can click preview page or view app in order to look at this page through the published application to see what it's going to look like. If you recall earlier, we added a job notes data table so we can keep a log of all the notes and how they relate to each job. The recommended approach would be to create what's known as a child page where we can see additional details about each job and view notes connected with that job. In the same way that connections inside of the data builder have a child to parent relationship, when you're building out pages inside of the page builder, you will encounter pages that also have a child to parent relationship. The parent level pages are typically used to display one or many data tables and the raw data that lives inside of them. You can also use the parent level pages to create unique dashboards and other visual reporting tools. Examples of a child level page that are connected directly to a parent level page could be things like the add new record pop-up form, an edit form, or a detail page that lets us view information about one specific record from the parent page. The option to create a detail page is presented to you when you are first creating your page and selecting a component and a data table. We can also enable this manually by editing the component 
and finding the record details link underneath the links menu. By adding this link to the table component, we'll automatically create a child page that's connected to this particular page and this component. We can then navigate to the record detail page we've just added and add a form component to add new connected job notes. Just like we did in the previous page, we can also add a table to view all of the job notes that are being added to the application and that are connected to this job. Now when we go back and look at our published application once again, we have a new button here in this table component that allows us to view the specific information or details about any given record in this table. From within that detail page that we are navigating to, we can now add those job notes as they are connected to the specific job. We now have a really basic application that's finished that allows us to view and add jobs to a jobs data table and to view and add job notes as they connect to each job in our application. But there's so much more that we can do inside of Tatabase, and some of those things are incredibly important to the overall success of a larger application. It's more than likely that your application is going to be used by a number of different people within your organization that all have different roles. We can use those roles to help us define what data those users should have access to and also what functions they can perform inside of your application. Revisiting our data builder and inside of the default users table, we can see that this table is used to store all of the actual user information that allows those users to log in to the published application. For every user that you create in your application, you can assign a specific user role. A user role can then be used later on to define various page permissions and other security features. Inside the page builder, specifically inside of page layouts and pages themselves, under the security tab, you'll notice that we can define different options based on those roles that we configure inside of the users table. For instance, I can set the security of my page layout to only be visible to those with certain roles. And when non-authorized users try to access a page within this layout, we can show them a customized message or we could redirect them to a different page such as the login page. The login component, which exists inside of a login page, allows us to control the flow of users after they log in based on their user role. By configuring login redirect rules, you can define that when a user is a specific role, we can redirect them to a specific page. This ensures that we're properly directing traffic through your application to the appropriate pages with the appropriate data. You can add and edit users in your application in the same way that you can add and edit records from other data tables. You can allow users to sign up and register for accounts on their own, or you can build administrative pages that allow you and your team to create login information for all of your users. At some point through your app building journey, it's likely that you're going to want to create some sort of business logic that exists within your pages to perform and automate various tasks. We've already talked about one briefly when we were inside the data builder, and that would be table rules. To recap, table rules allow you to build automations that function on various events, such as when records are created, when records are edited, or both. The actions that you have available to you inside of table rules allow you to automate the setting of different field values when records are created or edited or both. For more granular control over rules with some additional helpful options, form component record rules allow us for very powerful automations that can be used post form submission. We can use record rules to update the record that was just submitted through the form component. We can also use record rules to insert records into a data table or update and insert connected records. When creating record rules, that record rule is going to exist for this form component only, so you have ultimate control when this form is actually being used by your users. The form component has three additional areas of business logic that could be configured as needed. Display rules will allow you to show or hide inputs on the form based on the values of other inputs. Submit rules will allow you to define what happens to the user after they submit this form. Are they redirected somewhere or are they shown a message? And lastly, validation rules allow you to validate the values that are inputted on the form before the form is actually submitted. If the rules that you create inside of validation rules are not met, then the user will not be able to submit your form. Similarly to record rules and table rules, various components such as the table, list, and detail component have a unique option to include an action link. 
An action link is an interactive button that can be placed inside of the component that will then fire off a series of actions that can perform functions in the same way that record rules and table rules can. There's some additional options with action links such as send email or send text message or even generate a PDF form. The last option that has to do with rules and automations is through the use of scheduled tasks. Scheduled tasks bring time-based automations to your application, allowing for actions to be executed at predefined intervals. And the last piece of business logic that we can talk about here is the use of PDFs inside of Tatabase. PDF forms allow you to upload a pre-configured PDF that you have for your organization and fill each field on that PDF with data that comes from within your application. Whereas PDF pages allow you to build robust and dynamic pages with various components as printable or downloadable reports of the data that lives inside of your application. The last three items inside of the tabbed menu on the left-hand side of the builder are pipes, data bridge, and settings. Both pipes and data bridge allow you to communicate with external data, meaning data that lives outside of your database application. Whereas pipes are meant to perform specific actions using third-party API services. Whereas data bridge allows you to dynamically retrieve large data sets from external sources and display them inside of your database application. Your app settings is where you're going to control various aspects of behind the scene functions for your application. You can control basic information such as the app name, the date format, the time format, and your time zone, additional user and app security settings, as well as domain settings, which allow you to assign a custom domain to your application so that you can fully white label the experience for your users. And with that, we have just about covered all of the basic core concepts and functionality that make up what Tatabase is and what helps you build successful and powerful applications. Thanks for watching and happy building.